I still can't believe Doug asked a caller that. That's remarkable. Um, Rico, Kenny, Rico has demanded a pivot, and I'm going to do it. I will get to the Lions momentarily, but I want to offer you something. We're a couple of days away from the Tigers opening up their season in Chicago Thursday afternoon, right here on 97 won the ticket. Um, I want you to sell me this pen. Here's what I mean. Just work with me for a second. Now, we're all entering the season hopeful. And as I always say, hope is not a strategy. It's just an emotion. It's something we lean on. We are hoping the Tigers take a step forward. We are hoping they could somehow get into the mid-80s and maybe win this garbage can of a division. But I, I really thought about this is that now that really the offseason's over and you're going in with what you got, I, I wanted to know if I'm a bad person for the following reasons. So work with me, and then if you think, Michael, you can't approach it this way. I'm not mad. I will not die on this hill. But I read a news blurb that really chapped my ass. So you guys know I hate drafting high schoolers in the MLB draft, especially when you're up high. I think you got to take college bats, college arms. It's just it's the way to go. Too developmental going the high school route. Well, the player you passed on is about to break camp with the World Series champion Texas Rangers, Wyatt Langford, who's an outfielder just like Max Clark. So Langford's going to break camp. And spring training, the stats don't really matter to me, but when a kid puts up a 1,300 OPS over the course of a month, you go, okay, well, that's different. They're a World Series team. And this kid is so good, they're finding a reason for him to break camp and violate all service uh, restrictions. <laughs> Max Clark's probably not going to be here for two years. Okay, so we'll see you in 2026. On a fast track. Uh, maybe middle of 25. But my point is, Langford is only a piece of it. You know what else I can't really let go of? That you decided not only are we going to start a dead guy at short and Javi Baez, we're going to have a Frankenstein at third base. We'll figure it out. A collection of replacement level players, whether it be McKinstry, Gio Urshela. So I drilled down on this stuff. And while none of the numbers are exact, and while projections, if the game was only based on that, there wouldn't be a human element. I said to you, how are we not attempting to sign Matt Chapman? Gold glove third baseman off the worst year of his life because he had an injured finger. Mm -hmm. A guy that on a year-in, year-out basis, on aggregate, is about a five-win above replacement player. So a five-war guy. Do you know the projections for Wyatt Lankford are basically two and a half wins above replacement? So that's seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Your third base conglomerate is a flat one win above replacement. Your outfield spot or your DH spot, Kerry Carpenter. Did not hit a home run in the last two months of the year. He's a, he's projected to be a .8 war guy this year. And I like Kerry Carpenter. I want him on this team. I'm making a point to you. ESPN put their projections up that the Motor City Kitties are going to win 78 games. Okay, that would be a failure to me. The division probably will be 85, 86, 87 wins. If you had drafted Langford, and you had signed Chapman, you're seven games better right there. Mind you, your payroll is $55 million below league average. Am I wrong that while I want to build for the future, and I don't want to block the path, like Colt Keith, can't wait to see him. I think their pitching is actually good enough to win right. this thing. It's the lineup where the offense last year was 28th in baseball. You got to double that. You got to be top half of the league to make the play. You got to have an offense somewhere in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Rico, for $54 million on a three year deal <laughs> and simply not drafting a 12 year old, am I like, sell me this pen? Well, and then it got to the point where I could even put a cherry on top and give you a game or two because I said, what if you took JD Martinez, who signed a one year deal for $12 million? He's a DH, as you explained, but that's at least another game or two, so that means maybe you're going down to the final week in September battling for the division. So we did none of those things. You did draft Max Clark, who, 
You're going to call up. I know what you nerds are going to do. Well, you just wait. Max is a better defensive player. Yeah, maybe in 2027. But the division is to be had right now. That's where I'm at. And even if Wyatt Langford and Max Clark are similar, I'm getting one guy two years earlier. Well, think about it. He's, as you stated, so good, they're willing to say, forget the service time. He could help us win right. now. And he's a, and, and it's a World Series team. Yeah. This is not. Then th- that's a team that could afford to play the service time game. Well, let's hold off. Let's right. extend that contract. You know what? Let's run it back. So I want to ask you guys this. With opening day just a couple days away. Sell me this pen. Look, we're hopeful. I'm not negative about this team. I think they got a shot to win this division. If anything, my criticisms of how Scott Harris has gone about this are rooted in the fact that flow chart – I think they can win division. Like, you already have a dead guy at short who's going to be batting ninth. You have a Frankenstein at third base. It's a collection of nothing. You didn't go out and get tangibly better offensively. Please do not sell me Mark Canna. That's another barely above replacement level bat. Sell me this pen. Tell me I'm wrong with with feeling this way. That I'm not asking Chris Illich to go out and spend half a billion dollars like the Rangers did two years ago. I'm not asking to throw the prospects out, make some ridiculous, you know, 1990s style trade. I'm not doing that. Matt Chapman was there to be had three at 54. Jace Young, I mean, that he's not even ready. He's got to learn how to play third. So I don't even consider blocking his path. You have Cole Keith, we're good. We're not blocking anybody. If you're going to start doing this bit about, well, you don't want to block Kerry Carpenter, I'm sorry. He's a 26-year-old farmhand who might have been a flash in the pan. I hope that's not the case, but the last couple months of the season, it sure felt like it. See, I think the Tigers have done a great job in convincing people you don't need a pin. So they can't sell you a pin, Mike, because the Tigers have told you we're nowhere near ready. Just go out and enjoy these young guys and just wait. In a few years, they'll all blossom and turn into something. And that's what drives me crazy about this town. It's always about next year. It's always about down the line. They sell you on these plans, and it's like, wait, why can't we run parallel path? Dude, the, the Tigers have done mas- a masterful job at mind games with this fan. They've lowered the bar so much that – Hey, you know, here's Bobblehead Night, or here's the Bark at the Park. Come on down here, and here's new menu items. Yeah, here's new menu items, and that's all. You get that? You, uh, oh, it's got to be more than that. No, man, they've reduced it to, you want to have a good time? Come on down here, and maybe the team will win, but it'll have look, fun. R- first of all, like, people have to recognize, I, Minnesota's the favorite, but they're not infallible. I mean, they lost a Cy Young candidate last year. Sonny Gray left in free agency. They got all kinds of injuries right now, and they're a very boomer bust team. Mm-hmm. All right. The Royals, I, I, I'm not ready to go there despite Bobby Witt being amazing, but like White Sox stink. Guardians are the weakest they've been in a long, long time. You why not? And, and yet, there was no pressure on Scott Harris. There's seemingly no willingness, urgency to, desire to do anything. So I'm hopeful, and and I am excited for baseball. I love baseball, and I'm hopeful. But man, those two decisions on surface not not doing this Scott Boris game and spending two hundred million dollars. Matt Chapman was three at fifty four. J D was one at twelve. And you, I'll never agree with drafting a high schooler that high. So the Wyatt Langford thing, I did those shows the next day. The fact that Langford is good enough to break camp with the Rangers means he's absolutely... Wyatt Langford would be one of your three or four best bats right now. <laughs> I, d- think about that. That's sad, no, but no, it's that, true. That's why I was laughing. Like, I mean, think about this. So, I think it was... was it Dude, this? I'm to the point where I'm, I'm willing to just... Cookie's made a joke about it, Mike, but I'm, I'm willing to just have a designated fielder and make that bias and let the pitcher bat. Because you probably will get better statistics. Only like the old school NL where they wore the jacket as they ran around the bases. (laughs) No, like I just, I would really, I think it was Baseball America. Forgive me if I've got the wrong list, but there was a top 100 players in the game. The Tigers have won. It was Riley Green at like 83. 
Do you know who number 84 was? Matt Chapman. I, I just, I, I don't understand in this town how there's no thirst or hunger or desire to ask for more where they could still have a payroll below league average. They could still be doing it on the cheap, but while building for the future, you can make, you can win the division. And yet there's, look at it, right here. Because all people in this town care about is getting bombed off three foot daiquiris, ripping zins, and maybe going on the Ferris wheel. There are no baseball fans. No, they're fans, Mike, but you've been reduced to lowering the bar because the team tells you we're so far away. We're poor. We're broke. But they're not. We're a small market city. They're not. They've done a masterful job of convincing the fans of this that don't expect anything from. Guys, we'll, we'll never spin like the Mets and the Yankees. And I don't need them to. I would never dare go on the radio and demand that. <laughs> the, the Dodgers are in a whole different tax bracket than we are. Once again, <laughs> I would never. <laughs> you are $55 million below league average. I asked for an expenditure. I mean, what is 54 to, uh, divided by three? I mean, you get my point. And, and, and I simply didn't understand kicking the can down the road by drafting a high schooler when Wyatt Langford was sitting right there. Now it turns out that an idiot like me wasn't wrong because Langford is breaking camp with the Rangers. And they're a World Series team. They're loaded. Mm -hmm. And that's on the heels that I still have a bad taste in my mouth from the trade deadline with the way the Erod thing went down. And this offseason is Mark Canna. Jack Flaherty, who hasn't been good in four years, and a broken pelvis of Gio Urshela, who if he's healthy, he can hit lefties a little bit. I don't mind Gio, but he's not an everyday third baseman at this stage of his career. Right. But it still feels like you're still trying to do things on the cheap, even though you don't have to. Miggy's contract is gone. You could actually go out and spend the money. No, we, you know what? We're still going to be very frugal about everything, and we're not quite ready yet. And the fans have bought into it. I know. There will be no demands. There will be no. And and just so we're clear, what I'm saying is not unreasonable, right? No, it's not. Just it's, it's don't draft a 12 year old and you sign Chapman. I think you're five to seven games better. How about you just act like you're a professional baseball team and you're actually trying to win? That's not that hard.